It was six months ago that Ark last negotiated the treacherous entrance to Devonport Harbour. It is her home port, but only three feet of water in places beneath the keel of a ship which displaces 50,000 tonnes presents a formidable task for any navigator. Ark Royal's navigator is nursing her through for only the second time in his life. But today, nothing can go wrong. A homecoming ship, now in the best shape, has everything on her side. The arrival of a large ship always has a galvanising effect on a port tradesman. But the arrival of Ark Royal at Devonport means more than Matlow's and their money. She's the fourth ship to bear the name, the first Ark Royal going back to Elizabethan times when she defended her country against the Armada. In Drake's country, the name has always had a special meaning. Today, July the 16th, her welcoming party has come from much further afield than Plymouth. Hundreds of families and friends have assembled outside the dockyard, waiting in the hot sun for transport to the jetty. Understandably, the strain of being so close and still apart is now almost unbearable. During the past six months, there's been no shortage of letters, photographs, and even the occasional phone call home. But in half a year, babies have been born, children have grown, and dear ones died. We travelled yesterday from Preston, and uh, of course we landed here at 11 o'clock last night and arrived at the gates here at half past 11. Meeting. meeting the sun. No one is allowed on or off the ship until customs clearance. It'll take hours if the customs men are in a humane mood, but it could take two days if they decide, as they might, on a thorough search. Every sailor is on tenterhooks. A missed train could be a lost day of leave at home. Rank, of course, has its privileges. The captain's wife is a VIP. The normal rules don't apply to her. But she does share in common with all Navy wives the continuing cycle of welcomes and farewells. For the Graham's youngest son, Charlie, apple of his father's eye, the inside of Ark Royal is as familiar as the playing fields of his prep school. A visit on board is more than mere filial duty. Charlie would like to join the Navy too. Not a surprising ambition for a captain's son. But Ark Royal will have long since disappeared before midshipman Graham ever goes to sea. What would you like to drink? Charlie. Okay. I'll just get Charlie's skateboard here. Right. Don't say anything rude. Just pronounce. Oh, it's beautiful. Very much. Well, don't break your neck on it. Oh, you. Oh, well. Do we have? Here we go. Cheers.
The captain's wife has driven down from Surrey to snatch her husband away for a brief family weekend. She's well aware that although the ship is now safely alongside, his job doesn't end there. Now the civic duties will begin. The first, a visit to Leeds, the city which raised the nine million pounds to build Ark Royal during the war. The captain will repay a little of that with money raised by his sailors for Leeds charities. The customs are mean. They concede to sailors only half the duty-free liquor allowed to civilians and only six pounds worth of gifts. Come on, the quieter you are, the quicker we'll get through. And if you think I'm skylighting, my son, you better start thinking again. Now, shut up. Come off properly. What do you people want? You are seamen and will be piped for. 849B flighters. When they come, I want them filling over there, look. All right? I've been trying to get off. Moments ago, Ark was a single family encased in a steel hull. Now, as the ship empties, 2,600 separate lives begin. <laughs> Thankfully, the formalities are all over and families are now allowed on board. In six weeks' time, the kisses of welcome will change to the waves of farewell. Ark's timetable is programmed months ahead, and there's a big NATO exercise looming off Norway. Defaulter Stuart Cunningham returns not to the bosom of his family, but to a Royal Naval prison. He's received a sentence of 42 days detention for deserting in America. His sentence has begun. A wife and new baby depend on him, but while he's in prison, he'll receive no pay. Ark Royal sails again in almost exactly 42 days. By Navy standards, it's been a routine deployment. But this box of baby sailors did cross a couple of oceans, kept their end up alongside sleek NATO allies in mock battles, and gave the runaround to persistent spy trawlers. They showed the flag with a certain dignity amid the pantomime of America's bicentenary, and were able to look back with a quiet pride on their rescue of an American submariner on the very day of Ark's 21st birthday. Again, by Navy standards, discipline was pretty good. Out of two and a half thousand men, a mere handful of not very serious offenders begin short terms of imprisonment. So anyway, that, that was another talk. The squadrons have dispersed to their land bases in Cornwall, East Anglia and Scotland, and the ship is now safe for a public walkabout. There's the flight deck, Emma. Leading hand, Twinkle Powell, ladies' man of the Spanish main, welcomes his parents aboard. <laughs> it's that kind of beer I give you. <laughs> God, this is big up here, isn't it? <laughs> what a size, though, isn't it? It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Is this where you can play football and so? We, that's where we deck off everything. Come over here, darling. Look at this, tremendous. That's it? bright. 
And that, where this, the, this here, where the, where the helicopter's go. got them down, yeah. That's where they got them down, yeah. Uh, you left them up down with that, there, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah what about the yeah, planes, not the helicopters? Where did they go off? Yeah. not coming down there, Colin? No, but here, see, yeah. see the chains in that, look, Fred? Yeah. yeah. And they got the lift keys here, but the Sea Kings and Gannets go down here for the upper hangar, mate. And it's uh, it's magic, you see, it's magic when you see this lot work. They land straight down the red, straight down the red strip, okay? Now in daylight, you've got a good pilot, he can come on. He might not need that on a good calm weather, but if he's got rough weather, he needs that because he just can't land on it. And he's always going by that, because if he doesn't go by that, he gets a bollocking off of somebody at the top. Landover driver for Victor Starblood. Duty Landover driver. Come and see. You're all softy, aren't you? Tom Wilkinson, the fleet master at arms, can relax now with his own family. He's got a speaker in there. to see you. Where have you been today? Have you been a good girl? Have you been a good girl? The for you. How's that? Oh, come on. That's a beauty. <laughs> Ross, I ain't got the keys on me. No, I've got the keys. <laughs> the Powells arrive home at Poole. Twinks will never again sail on Ark Royal. After 18 years in the Navy, he's been posted to HMS Heron, a naval air station in Somerset. Quarter past eight, bringing you home. It's incredible, isn't it? Quarter past eight, when? This morning? Yeah. Oh, well, you got well, school. What time did you get up? Got to school, driving yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. You do look like Gary Cooper with that. No, I don't feel like him. <laughs> I'm 63. <laughs> I'm 21. <laughs> I'll get this lot out first, all right, and we'll go for a pint, right? Oh, lovely. Uh, I'll get these out. What have you got there? I ain't got much. I ain't got much. Didn't bring much this time. You always say that. What's that then? I've got that for you, Anna. That's for me. That's all for sure. I got one for. Oh, super. I got one for Peter's Royal down the pub. Did you? That's lovely. I thought, well, it'd be nice. Is that on steel? Because I never sent him a postcard, did I? I think what I'd do with it is put it on this other wall because we've got the butterflies over there. Wouldn't it be. Uh, it goes huh? like that. Hang on, steady, don't touch it, it's very fragile. You've got one. Uh, it cost me 18 pints of beer that did. Hang on, put it down a minute. Hang on. Leave it alone. Let me get sort it out first. Leave it alone. That is a white one, here. Mm. I forgot how it goes, actually. I forgot how it goes. I know what it is. It's a Hubble bubble pipe. No, it's not Hubble bubble. I'm not on the <laughs> stuff. I like beer. <laughs> It looks like a double bubble pipe. Is there a tray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On that, and then if you put it behind the light, if you can imagine it, that goes in the middle, right? Yeah. With um, coloured water in it, right? Ooh, like that. And that goes in the middle, and then that drapes over the top, and you put the flowers in the swans. And the that, flowers in the swans? But what, where does all that coloured stuff? Oh, well, that goes in the top of here. You just oh, have one, so you can change your colours of water. You, you, you fill that up as well with colour, this one as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the whole Different lot of colour. Yeah, oh, you, can have, you could have mm -hmm. three red, white, and blue, sky blue, pink. Oh, that's, that's the nice. castle there. That looks honestly like a real castle, mate. No, I, I'd like love it. to take you both there one day. When I go outside yes, we will. with my gratuity and pension, I'm going to take you both there. <laughs> honestly, we're, we're, we're both going to have a retirement. We're going to do a lot of your gratuity. We are, and mate. Pension. We bloody well are. <laughs> <laughs> Some families in Devonport are still waiting. I shall phone my husband at about half past nine tomorrow morning to find out exactly what time he's getting off. And, uh, I shall book the taxi for him and he'll come home in the taxi. His children, their presents and things that he's bought us. Yeah. We'll just spend the day getting used to one another again, you know, and getting used to the children again. A fortnight after Ark Royal had sailed away on a grey morning in February, Mrs Janet Hobbs gave birth to a boy. Her husband, Petty Officer Hobbs, has not seen his first son, 
and it's frustrating to him and to her that he has to spend the first night back in port on duty. Not every sailor can be reunited with his family on the first day in. A skeleton crew must remain on board at all times. Apart from the obvious security patrols, the ship's engines have to cool down gradually and the shafts still have to turn in their casings. Some 300 sailors are not too pleased to spend yet another night afloat. There are two different types of guys on this ship. That's the married guy who lives in Guz and the guy who is either single or lives away from Guz. They've got two different ways of life. Like, I, I'm married in Guz, the same as Steve is. And obviously, when you come to your home port, you just don't want to sit on the ship when you know that maybe only three or 400 yards in certain cases, we look over to St. Budo, that your wife's there waiting for you. Do you want to go for a drink? We'll go in here. Sailors called Devonport Guz. It's short for Guzzle, the place where they can eat and particularly drink without restriction after months of being rationed to three cans of beer a day. Is it true what they say about sailors? Yes! Is it true what they say sailors do? To be a love them and leave them, they never report. And is every matter the rollicking sort? Can you all wave the anchor? How much does it? What do you think I feel like doing after that long, after that long at sea? Do you think I'm going to sit at home? I'd like to go home. Yeah, sure, I'd like to go home. But some of us can't. OK. OK, well, what do you expect me to do? What do you expect us all to do? You tell me. You expect us to go down and sit quietly on our asses in some pub down the road? Hey, come on. OK. I enjoyed it. Very, yeah. very nice yeah. indeed, but I'd rather be home. Oh, it's, 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 there's no substitute for this place. Jolly good. <laughs> well, we'll see you more now. Anyway, we'll see you later. We'll go for some yeah. fish for the dog. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, then. He's in Canada with the scouts. The fleet master at arms, Tom Wilkinson, lives with his wife and their dog, Cinders, in the depths of the country, near the little market town of Castle Carey in Somerset. Oh, there's lovely. under Calgary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, super. Smashing, really. Lovely. Thank you for that town. Uh, 34, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you have a good trip? Yeah, super. Yeah. Very, very nice indeed. Apart from the weather, the weather was very, very hot, but yeah. very muggy. You know? managed to cope with everything, did he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, super. See you later then, Maureen. Yeah, all right. Thank you very yeah. much. It's Church the Wilkinson's 11th well, well, wedding anniversary fine. today. Sheila doesn't know it, but from the middle of the Atlantic, Tom has organised a little surprise. Did somebody bring something here for me this morning? Yes, they did. Oh! <laughs> Happy anniversary. That was a surprise, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> hey? <laughs> On your mark, skip set, go! <laughs> at Crondall, near Farnham in Surrey, the guest of honour at the village fete is local celebrity, Captain Graham. Small boys coming to the Yes, sir. Ah, now what have you given me? What's this? This is a cub t-shirt. Well, thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much indeed to the, uh, the Ark Royal Cubs for giving me this uh, splendid T-shirt. And when I get back to my ship and wear this uh, T-shirt, everybody will know where I belong. So thank you very much indeed. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask Captain Graham to pick the winning ticket and present the prize. Anything on the table? Anything on the table behind us? Now, this is the, uh, the general raffle, and it's yellow ticket 492. Yellow ticket 492. <laughs> Oh, wow. what a fiddle! What a fiddle! <laughs> well I'll have the cake. Please. You have the cake. Do you make it? Uh, I made it. Somebody else. <laughs> and the next prize. Would you go on, go on. What a fiddle! Phil, they are, my love. That's from the ship, right? Oh, yeah. oh lovely. Can I have a couple of pints? Oh, isn't that nice and beautiful, isn't that? What's that? Can I have that? At the King Charles in Thomas Street Pool, the local celebrity is Twinkle Powell. I've done a lot, yeah, we've done a lot. In six months I've seen a lot this trip. Did you have the horse? Well, I'll tell you what, I won... Um... Uh, did you have your big set? I, 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 I lot. Over the desert I room. <laughs> Oh, the dead. Oh, oh, okay. oh John, where's well, I'm a horse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Hey, Pat, we'll tell you about the hat bigger than your shoulders. Let's keep it up. Van Rouge. Van Rouge. Yeah. Two litres. Four bandings. Two is. Five. Thank you very much. Captain Graham has good cause to celebrate. It's not just that he's returned safely after a successful incident-free tour, but he's also heard some good news. The news, which has so delighted the Graham family, is that Captain Wilfred Jackson Graham, RN, at the right career age of 50, is to be promoted Rear Admiral and to be Flag Officer Portsmouth from October the 14th, 1976. As well as an extra gold ring, the captain's salary will move from some 10,000 to 12,000 pounds a year. He may also, if he chooses, rent from the Navy the splendid Admiral's residence in Portsmouth for 1,077 pounds per annum, complete with domestic staff. With appropriate symbolism, the future of Tom Wilkinson and the ship he polices is linked. The fleet master at arms retires in 1979, around the time that HMS Ark Royal is due for the scrap heap. It's the end of an era. In a navy where technology reigns, there's little room for ships and characters that are larger than life. The day after docking, Petty Officer Hobbs finally steps ashore. The precious reunion with wife, daughter, and the baby son that he's yet to hold will inevitably end with a return to the sea. You, well, you, you, you always seem to be saying goodbye in the Navy. You know, you after about 18 years and you're moving around all the time, different people, different ships, different places of the world. Um, you meet a lot of good people, a lot of bad people. You're always saying goodbye all over the place. You know, it's, hello, goodbye, how are you? And stuff like this. Um, I've been on the Ark Royal, and I'll leave her August the 10th. And I've met a lot of good good people on there, made a couple of good friends, a few good friends on there. And um, that's going to be goodbye again. And the Ark Royal is finished virtually, you know, a few couple of years' time. And it's a pity, you know, you're just, just saying goodbye all the time. You know, it's, uh, it's a pity. You're always all over the place moving around, you know. Um, it's, it's a good life, but uh, you can, but there's, you settle in one place and then you move on again. You know, you do a couple of years here or a year there or a week here or two days there or something like this. And it's just goodbye all the time, you know. Cheers and see you and all this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And, uh, 